No, that's okay. This is an expert. This is a better. Something. Three one. Three one. Uh, thank you, Jesse. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, 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 congratulations, uh, Malavika and Mukesh, for actually taking the initiative to organize the Indus here. Uh, like all good things, they start small. I think you are in the right direction. I'm sure uh, in the next uh, events, uh, you will uh, suddenly see uh, the kind of energy and kind of uh, participation that you're imploring from all uh, uh, those who are in Calcutta. I'm sure that will definitely happen. Right. Yeah, I've been uh, um, asked to talk about uh, the reaching out to about billion Indians and um, uh, the digital transformation. And that is the topic which has been given to me. And uh, that is also, I thought, very contextually, very, very relevant, uh, given the theme of the event doing business in live economy. So the, we all are familiar with the kind of uh, things that are shaping the world. Uh, we hear about globalization. We hear about uh, the demographic shifts. We talk, hear about climate change. These are really fundamental things that are happening around the world which are, which are actually transforming the world. Uh, but above all of these, there is one thing which is really, really the big and which is uh, just transforming the lives uh, of people and also the way we work. And that is the technology. Uh, most of you here, are they all familiar with some of these. I mean, if you see these, these are incredible things that are happening. Um, we have the technology transforming industry sectors. Right? Some of you would have taken the uh, the kind of the, the service that is available, uh, the largest taxi operator has no cars, the largest hotel reservation hospitality company in the world has no rooms. Uh, this is an organization which is the largest media publishing organization in the world, Facebook. It doesn't produce any content of its own. And uh, uh, this is the Chinese organization, Alibaba is the largest retailer that has carries no inventory. How is this possible? I mean, this is something which is redefining the way we understand business or reimagining uh, that uh, what we have always grew up, understood the way the business is done. And this is um, another thing. I picked up this quote because it is again uh, reinforces the, the idea of what it means to live in, a, in, a, in an economy that we are in at this point in time, which is transformed by technology. Uh, do you recall this guy, Mark Andreessen? Uh, he is the, the first the person who had uh, created the browser for internet, Netscape, a popular browser, let me put that way. And also the, the first organization which made a successful IPO in the internet economy. Uh, way, way back, about 15, 20, 16 years back. So Mark Andreessen, he knows what he is talking about. He talks about that in the middle of these dramatic shifts that are being brought about in the technology, by the technology in the economic uh, context, it is the software companies that are poised to take over the very, very large segments of this economy. When I say software company, and he also means, when he, when he means software company, it is not literally a technology company, but a company which has uh, the software in its approach. So I'll elaborate a little bit on that. So, so what is this technology doing? How is technology making this happen and enabling this to happen? Is that it's, it's making it happen through removing the various constraints that exist in the industry sector. Like you have seen the earlier uh, examples of, say, Uber. Who thought that you could call in a car at any point in time you want? And uh, you can also share that with other co-passengers and split the face. 
right? And this is made possible by technology which, which removed various constraints that exist in the industry structure. And also making various possibilities um, unlimited. And this is not limited to only digital companies or bond digital companies as, the, as these being called. Uh, the, you know, the Googles and Amazons, the Alibabas or the Flipkarts of the world. This is something that uh, is equally applicable in every even traditional brick and mortar uh, business. Like I put some examples here, you can see from that. Uh, there's a fundamental shift in the way oil and gas companies are organizing themselves or conducting the business. Healthcare is getting completely disrupted with uh, advances in technology or applications of technology. Energy utilities, energy which is in a great demand, we all are familiar, you know, we keep reading about it, why we should, you know, conserve energy. Application of technology making it the whole industry efficient, even the consumption efficient. So let me come to this point. So what? You know, this is the big thing that is happening around the world. Where is the India opportunity in this? And to quote the uh, our Prime Minister, what he said in the context of digital India, and these are very, very powerful statement. Uh, in this digital age, we have an opportunity to transform lives of people in ways that was hard to imagine a decade back. And where is this optimism coming from? It's coming from the fact that the today's digital technologies are, enable, are enabling people to think of ways by which you can take the services, the products to the play, places and people who otherwise never had access to or never could have dreamt to uh, uh, to afford or buy those products and services. So the India story is, if you look at from the technology and penetration point of view, uh, we put together a slide here which, which shows a shift in the last five, six years. Uh, if you see the first one, the online e-commerce moved up from $5 billion to $16 billion, but the, really the, the punchline is actually in the below. And there is one organization here which is talking about, and at least optimistic, that they will grow 50 times, 50 times in the next three years. Just imagine, if you multiply that number with the way we are today, we are talking about an unlimited opportunity. And the, uh, and the other one, other statistic which we have here is the, the, the whole explosion of the mobile technologies. Uh, today we have 200 million smartphones, maybe around 300 million. But what is very exciting, and it's incredible, is that in the next couple of years, that's going to double. So the invention of mobile internet, as some leading industrialist, businessman, and uh, talk commented, uh, he said that to him, the in, this mobile internet is the single most powerful technology of this century because that's going to transform the lives of people in India. Here is also another advantage that we have as in India, which is uh, this is giving an opportunity for us to leapfrog technologies. See, those of you of my vintage possibly can relate to it. So I, I, I have seen the black and white TV. And then it took about 10 years to get into you know, color TV and then finally where we are today. See, but the, the, the today's generation have actually leapfrogged all that. They don't have the legacy. They were straight coming into a very, very powerful technologies with which you can do unlimited things. So this is an important uh, aspect of it. So while we are talking about one billion, uh, so this is a slide which, which, which basically gives you an idea of uh, if you look at it from the uh, glass half full or half empty kind of a perspective, it's the kind of a mountain to climb or it's also a big opportunity that, that is waiting to be leveraged. So if you look at this, it's broadly this has been brought, uh, borrowed from BCG uh, analysis. The billion people that we are talking about, 1.2 billion Indians, the income group classification is somewhat like this. 
those who are here in this room, uh, we are all in a fluent uh, class. And uh, but the, I want to draw your attention to the the other two aspects of it, which is 80% of Indian households are still are at a very basic sustenance level. Now this is extremely important because when we are talking about a fundamental transformation in the in the society and in the economy, it can only be done by enhancing and creating sustainable livelihoods. That creates a, a, a conditions of uh, uh, conditions in which people can consume whatever is made, whatever is being on offer. So unless that is done, otherwise you know there is a race to bottom because everybody is competing for a smaller uh, pie, and that pie is anyway to start with very small, and the, the competition can only just make it unviable. The the, the so transformation has to be premised on one fundamental assumption, which is you have to increase the share, increase the pie, and then compete for a larger share of the pie. So, what's a digital approach? A uh, digital approach. Uh, I think Gartner had a quite nice um, description about it, which is uh, uh, combine your physical business whatever you do in a physical terms with, uh, with a digital thinking, a digital approach, and uh, bring together the people, the things, and the entities. The people are employees, could be customers, could be business partners. The things you're talking about are the uh, IOTs, the Internet of Things. It could be machines, it could be various uh, smart products. And uh, the entities are, uh, are, the sh are the factories and your know, warehouses, godowns, and so on and so forth. So if you can create a, 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 a mechanism through which you can bring all these together and then create value for your consumers, that's what is being called as a digital approach. So the various technologies, you're all familiar about this, but I want, just want to you know, highlight the saliency of each of these technology from a perspective of a uh, user or a business. Uh, so you want to listen to all your customers. Today, uh, you may have customers could be all over the world or all over the country. You have social media to do that. You didn't have that five, ten years back. And just imagine the power of listening to all your customers in real time as you are here now. Uh, you have mobile. So you want to be connected with all your employees, wherever they are, and get the best possible productivity and efficiencies. You have the mobile technologies to be uh, able to deliver the solution for you. You want to know what is happening on your shop floor. You want to know what is happening in the supply chain. You have IoT to help you. You want to have real-time insights on how your performance is at this point in time and what kind of course corrections that you need to do in your business strategy. You have deep analytics technologies that are on offer. And above all, this entire package is beautifully bundled together. And, uh, and it's available for you uh, as you want, when you want, on a paper use basis through the cloud. Uh, this is, again, in a, a very, very interesting uh, development, which is earlier, very sophisticated technologies are available only for uh, large companies, because they could they could, they could afford it and they can invest it in, in them and then wait for a return to come. And small businesses had a challenge in terms of investing that kind of an upfront uh, uh, investment in expensive technologies. But cloud is fundamentally altering the, the whole game. So there is an opportunity for anyone, big or small, to, to take on uh, and get access to these sophisticated technologies on a pay-per-use basis. So this is what is happening. The wave has been building up. It's not new. It's been there for quite some time. But what's new is that it is hitting the land now. And there's going to be a major changes going to come in the coming years. So uh, if you look at here, uh, while the SMAC uh, IoT kind of technologies have been helping our businesses to do things in a very different way, 
there are even even more sort of advanced technologies that are coming in and they're already available and going to work on this foundation these are something to just to call out the cognitive systems which are going to make the uh, automation of business processes possible right where uh, people have to do lot many things like a reconciliation checks done typically in a financial accounting process these can be done by software robots what's the advantage they are faster obviously by productive qual quality is good and uh, this cost effective and people can actually focus on much better things than doing things of just matching a versus a b list and through these technologies every sector is expected to be touched be it uh, retail be it healthcare manufacturing agriculture and even uh, you know, as we you know we been lot many governments are talking about even the governance we hear about smart cities so you will we'll see technology everywhere in every industry sector so how are how are we using it uh, the reason why i want to uh, touching upon all these is that give you a framework in which uh, the the approach the digital approach is uh, embedded in and then then i'll come to a specific story to uh, to illustrate how we have put together all these things and uh, made some transformation so the use of digital is again uh, requires three pillars the first is uh, very clearly focused and obsessed with who the customer is and what the customer is looking for and um, and what the customer would be uh, wanting from you uh, so there is a deep customer understanding is required in order to do this and based on that understanding go about uh, ensuring that all the touch points with the customers are uh, captured and you have a, a visibility of uh, what she is looking for the second one is operations that's an extremely critical piece some of it you are already doing with the kind of it that has been invested in in all of our organizations uh, whether they are erps the crms etc this is basically ensuring that the fulfillment channel is in place and it is reliable enough to deliver the promises that we are making to the customers and the third piece is the business model and this is actually the differentiator this is the one which can uh, say that how digital approach is different from what we have been doing so far in the digital model the business model what you are talking about is that it's a digitally modified business it doesn't mean that you are you are putting in technology in place of whatever you are doing now you are actually reimagining redoing the whole uh, the way you work the way you conduct business uh, in a different way using technology the example is again you know if you are to illustrate that it's something like what is happening with ubers and ola it's not a business where a taxi operator used it to be more efficient that is not it's a completely different business right and uh, having done that kind of a creating that a business that business then lends itself to a variety of possibilities you don't have to stay only in the transportation business but you can go into many other adjacent business it's like what e, e retailers have done you heard about uh, one who had started just selling books and uh, today selling a wide variety uh, product categories across the spectrum so i have two stories of uh, digital transformation uh, to talk about and to illustrate whatever i have touched upon so far uh, the first one before i get into our own itc story uh, and this is a chairman uh, who talked about uh, inclusive india and an innovative india the imperative for combining the two because it's only the creation of fortune for the base of the pyramid Uh, that can make a fundamental difference to ensuring a secure and sustainable future this touches upon the whole premise that i started my talk with that when you are talking about reaching out to a billion customers it is extremely important to create a uh, capacity to consume not just uh, making things available for consumption so capacity if you have to enhance the capacity to consume it's very important to enhance the 
uh, economic opportunities of uh, at least that 80% of the households that I showed you earlier. And the second one is, quote here is the leveraging the power of internet and digital technology, uh, which is the story that I talk about, ITC e Chaupal. It's become uh, a very uh, transformational and sometimes aspirational model for the rural transformation. So what is ITC e Chaupal? And this is the way we use the technology as an enabler, but uh, looked at creating a, a, solving three fundamental needs for a farmer. Uh, what are these three needs? The first one is that a farmer is also a, a buyer. He is actually a small businessman, uh, meaning he has got a farm and he buys certain input materials for the farm, uses those input materials, puts his labor, produces an output, and that crop he will sell in a marketing platform, wherever that marketing platform is available, make some money. Right? It's like, a, it's like a small business venture. So when a farmer is like a buyer, many a times when the input materials are, uh, he need to buy those input materials like a fertilizer or a seed or a, or a farm equipment. He doesn't have the purchasing cloud because his needs are very small and therefore he cannot obtain, he cannot get uh, the kind of price discounts and price advantages a large farmer can get. So what we try to do is that, that's the first need, so we try to create a virtual buyer cooperative by aggregating, by using IT, creating an aggregation platform. So instead of one, you can combine 10 people, 10 farmers, 100 farmers together, and then create an economic size with which they can negotiate with the suppliers and get a, a, a fair, fair prices for their input materials. The second one is, uh, uh, is, uh, is, a, is essentially, um, many cases the farmer is in the rural interland, it's a media dark place, not much information goes there. So is many times they are oblivious of how the markets are moving, the demand sig signals, what the demand signals are. They are, they are intermediated or disintermediated uh, because of various layers. So this is second uh, uh, need has been, uh, again, uh, service through using technology with the internet, mobile, uh, the real-time trends, uh, the demand trends are transmitted to them so that they can align what they want to do with what the demand actually is. So that when the uh, crop is ready, etc., they when they come to the, to the, the marketplace, so they can avoid a situation where what they bring is, is already in surplus and therefore they can't get a, a good price. And the third aspect is basically a marketing channel. Uh, for them, so they can actually sell like on an exchange. It's like an eBay. So if they got something to sell, they can get out of the, market, the, the electronic exchange and get the, the uh, right buyer who is going to offer the best price and finish the transaction efficiently. So these are the kind of three things which have been brought in. And, uh, uh, and, and the concept behind is that you create each of all as a, as a digital magnet for all the new needs of in, in rural India. What are the needs? Is a beyond agriculture. There are infrastructure limitations in terms of health, education, uh, and variety of things. So we created this infrastructure in such a way that it can lend itself, it can replicate itself, starting with agriculture, but can move into other areas. Uh, as I said, the enabler is uh, technologies, information technology, and uh, also realization that it is something that you know, we can't do alone. We have to do with a, a whole lot of partnerships, because we bring certain competencies in creating this, but we also need uh, other competent players, for example, uh, logistic providers. Right? This, this is a physical product which has to move from point to point. So we, we connected with many logistic providers and create an ecosystem so that multiple services can be delivered on this platform to a farmer in the, in the, in, in the village. And finally, whatever is being designed has to be done on a sound business principles. Uh, if it is done on a, it's not a charity, because charity cannot scale unless supported by somebody like government. 
So you say it has to be a profitable enterprise. It has to be a sustainable enterprise. So these are the principles which have been brought into each of all. Uh, these are a few glimpses of how it works. I just took one example of how the technology is leveraged to uh, transform a very simple, simple thing like uh, uh, selling a, a commodity, a, a wheat or a rice or a potatoes uh, by a farmer. So this, this is where the technology comes in. For example, the, the demand aggregation platform uses mobile, mobile technologies. It's got a very robust back-end ERP. Uh, price discovery happens in the village with the farmer on the phone. And if the farmer likes it, the, that price, he concludes the transaction and then uh, uh, communicates his willingness to uh, do the transaction. Uh, there's a quality assessment done. This equipment is all, uh, uh, again, highly uh, tech-enabled process through which uh, the quality is assessed. And, uh, and when, the, when the commodity is actually brought to a place where it has to be stored, there also there's a lot of technology to make the operations very efficient. So this is how uh, you put together uh, a, a digital approach rethink the existing business process in a way that where the technology can come, information movement, physical movements can be made a lot more efficient than what they were earlier. And second example I have is a, uh, a company uh, which is about to change the long haul transportation in the country, in India. Uh, very counterintuitively, can you guess, I mean, what is the problem they are solving? Anyone? In fact, the problem they're solving is not transportation. The problem they were solving is this one. There's an acute driver shortage in India. Right? Nobody wants to be a, a truck driver. Right? Even though when I was in school and, uh, you know, in my young days, I wanted to be one. Uh, maybe I should have become one instead of a CIO. <laughs> and then it would have been, you know, the, maybe this, the people should spend a lot of time with the IT teams to understand the trouble that we go, go through. But uh, the reason is this. A truck driver is away from family, home for 20, 25 days. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of issues because of social stigmas, because when they are not away from the families, Health is a big challenge for them because they eat on the roadsides and uh, sleep wherever they can. So nobody wants to be a, a truck driver, right? And this company is completely changing the way the whole thing works. How does it work? So they're converting this driver uh, work time, not 20, 25 days, but eight hours a day. How do they do it? They're creating what is called as a junction model. When a driver will start from the base station, drives for four hours, gets down, and somebody else will drive next four hours. And he'll come back with a, another truck coming back, going back to his base station. It's almost like a pilot. It's like an you know, airline pilot model. So he'll go back home, end of the day. And this is happened, this, and look at the kind of thing that they're doing. So this is like a driver returns home the same day, and the vehicle running, because he has to sleep sometime when he is driving, right? Instead of eight hours, it's going to 22 hours a day. So what is the result? Earlier, if it, a, a, a trip that used to take anywhere between Delhi and uh, take Chennai, I'll take the worst case, 240 days, that's about 10 days. Turnaround, that is going and coming back, is being done in four days now. So that's the kind of uh, change brought in. This is not uh, digitizing existing processes. This is completely thinking renew, right? It's reimagining the way it should be done. And a whole lot of technologies are driving this, right, behind the scene. Uh, and this is what they're delivering to the customers, right? The freshness improvement, because it takes only four days now, instead of 10 days, or two days, actually. It's one way, so it's two days instead of five days. Uh, it's a new market access. Earlier, people couldn't even dream of sending to something which is far away. Now they, they are quite uh, uh, willing to take the risk because it takes only such a short time. And uh, of course, the finally, 
so as I said, a lot of technologies are driving that. So in conclusion, I so look forward to hear your transformation stories for billion Indians very soon. And that's a power that is available with the kind of technologies that are available with all of us. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the audience? Because A single hotel, the largest retailer, Alibaba, doesn't own one single inventory. Can you introduce yourself, please? So my name is Malcolm Munsif. I'm a chartered accountant. Okay. I worked with the Tatars. Okay. How do, you, how do I go back? No, no. What is your question? Uh, what is your question? Yes, sir. Could you just uh, state your question also, please? Uh, I just wanted no, no real question. I wanted to see the first slide because it seemed very, uh, very. Uh, I've heard it before, but I just I missed the essence of it. This, yeah, this is the one. Can you just repeat what you said? Uh, the first one is. What What is the first one? The biggest. Yeah, the biggest taxi company, which is the Uber. You see the logo? That Uber. Uber. Achha. Second one, BN, Airbnb. Is a, Airbnb is a hotel. Uh, hotel it's a hotel here. Basically, they will. It's they a, don't own a single hotel. They won't. They don't. Okay. It's like a Uber only. Alibaba, I know, yeah. retailer. And Facebook. I'm sure you're on Facebook. Facebook, yeah, but uh, it doesn't create any largest media company. It's not a media company. It, it's a, it publishes the, the content that is available on the Facebook. Is, it's like a media. It's, it's a, you know, a billion people use Facebook every day and read what is happening in the world on Facebook. It is actually. That's <laughs> okay. Fine. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, the point is not that. The point is that the technology is helping businesses, new businesses to come, which were not there earlier. Yeah. Uh, could I you introduce question. yourself, please, sir? I have a question. My name is Tapu Gupta. I am GMIT of UL Industries Limited. Uh, this each Opal, this is a cutting edge technology. There is no doubt in it. But how do you train up the end users who are mostly illiterate people? So how do you take up the challenge? Can we please explain? Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah. In fact, when you are doing for the first time, it's never easy. Because you have to uh, invest in not just uh, making things available, but also helping people to use that in a, in a manner that it is intended for. Just to give another example is that probably the situation 50 years would have been just by providing cars will not help. You have to teach people also how to drive the car. Right? So we do a lot of investment in the training uh, at the village level. And uh, this training is done in the local languages. Uh, as you know, again, you know, if, if it's in Bengal, it's in Bengali. And uh, if it's in somewhere in South, it is in the local languages. So people, uh, we, we make investment in that and then uh, help people train. We also do one more thing, which is we also, many other villages, we not only train the farmer in terms of how to use it, but also we, uh, we, we train their children. In fact, it is very interesting. In fact, children are the best learners. Yeah, they, and when they learn the technology, they teach their parents and teach several other people in the village. And you have made that investment for future. So this assignment is taken by ITC only? Or you, yeah. I mean, engage somebody else? No, ITC does it. And also we have a lot of, as I talked about ecosystem, for the want of time, I did not get into the details. But we work with many civil society organizations, we work with NGOs, we work with government organizations. Many states do extend a lot of support. Government is extremely supportive. Okay, thank you. That would, I think, be the last question at the back, please. I'm B. Dazupto from Tata Steel. Uh, so I just wanted to, to have your views on what are the digital transformation initiatives of your company 
which will touch the lives of uh, customers. Each um, Opal is quite old. I think around 10 to 12 years back, you had yeah. launched this. Yeah, see, while I've taken this as an example, because the scale that we are actually we are talking about, uh, today, again, uh, uh, when I say each Opal, while the concept is about 10, 12 years, today, uh, if you see the way each Opal operates, uh, you will not recognize if you had seen it, you know, 10 years back and you're seeing it again now. Because there's a continuous reinvention which takes place. It's like any business. If you don't innovate, you do not grow, you don't evolve, ad adapt, uh, then you'll be out of sync and become irrelevant. Right? So each Opal has gone through many, many cycles of refresh. And today what we do uh, is much, much more than what we started with. When we started with only agriculture, that is only as a demand aggregation platform. But today we do a lot many things for the community, for the social, uh, health, education. And the mode of deliveries have changed. Earlier it used to be web-based and desktop-based kind of access. Today we are talking about smartphone-based, app-based uh, access. So technology also has changed. So point, the reason why I chose this example is to bring that aspect of very large, very, very large scale impact. Thanks, sir. I was actually looking for anything new which is coming up in your uh, roadmap. We do, we're doing a lot of work also on our educational stationary products business where we do, uh, 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 we have a brand uh, under the brand called Classmate. We have uh, uh, notebooks, educational products. We work with many, many schools across the country and using technology, uh, we, we do a lot of work on, uh, uh, in the education space. Right. So there is a the digital and physical is uh, quite uh, uh, integrated there and intertwined. Thanks. Sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Jessica. Thank you. So I really enjoyed that talk and I learned about the junction model, but. Um,